Hi, everybody. My name is Michael Winans, and I'm going to present today on the dynamics of English in the digital age. We're going to talk about global, local, and functional modulation of English. So the things we're going to cover today are we're going to define modulated English as our me. Uh, we're going to look at English modulation on the global, local, and functional levels. And then look at a proposal for influential factors and actors of colonialism and imperialism based on a world system of Englishes from Mayer 2013. First, let's define modulated Englishes. Modulated Englishes exist within the context of English as a lingua franca and globalization. Uh, modulated English forefronts the internet as a primary medium for language contact and progressively influential to the dynamic evolution of Englishes. Originally conceived as a near future reality, the age of COVID-19 has probably pushed us past the demarcation from a primary medium to the primary medium for English language contact. So next we're gonna look at the continuum of Englishes. Uh, we're going to look at three different levels, the, mass, uh, macro, mes the macro, meso, and micro levels, which correlate to global modulation or the entire cohort of Englishes around the world, local modulation, which are the regional varieties and functional modulation, which is in situ communication. So let's first take a look at global modulation. Global modulation is visualized as the sphere of intelligibility. This is where one variety does not stray too far from the entire cohort of Englishes, retaining its usefulness and social evolutionary competitive advantage. Basically, Englishes are modulated to maintain intelligibility and thus utility for pursuit of power and opportunities. Um, here's the visualization of the sphere of intelligibility. This is a cross-sectional view. So we have the centripetal forces which influence mutual intelligibility, the push towards the center. And then we also have centrifugal forces which expand the sphere, sometimes beyond intelligibility. So this occurs when people use their agency to push the bounds beyond the intelligibility, the, the bounds of the intelligibility. And, and what happens is you create creels and pigeons by doing that. Another thing to notice is that there is no central variety of English. Um, local modulation, this occurs usually within the studies of world Englishes. Um, they detail the sociolinguistic realities of these geographical bound varieties around the world. These varieties are modulated by realities based on local needs, cultures, and norms. So we can see in the graph of world Englishes that there, there are percentages of, of countries that speak English. And then below that, English language across the world um, pinpoints and details a wide variety of different varieties. But we know, for example, in the United States, that we have other geographical geographic varieties as well, like Southern English. We have a Boston English and a New York English. So these are not inclusive whatsoever. There's also functional modulation, which happens at the micro level. This is the in situ function of language in which interlocutors work collaborative, collaboratively while utilizing their multilinguistic communicative and semiotic repertoires. Uh, they dynamically modulate their interaction as they negotiate for mutual intelligibility. The goal here is to understand one another. When two people are engaged in communication, they use a full set of their repertoire and resources in order to communicate, even if that means utilization of words and phrases beyond the language that they're currently speaking. Uh, functional modulation visualized takes two different varieties of English. Uh, the sine waves represent the constant and dynamic nature of the language evolution, while the functional modulation image is representative of the result of the modulating influences of each variety on the other over infinite points of possible interaction on a timeline. You basically take English variety one and two, you combine them together to create a, a timeline in which there is an infinite number of possible interactions they could have had over this period of time. And that's represented by the two varieties coming together as one and modulating together or modulating each other. Um, we also need to talk about influential factors. Uh, the factors and actors that influence and influence modulated Englishes are born from colonial, imperialistic, and hegemonic power and are not without consequence. The world system of Englishes illuminates the multidirectional influences of languages and multilingualism while still making accommodations for the obvious and disproportionate influences of the varieties with power. 
The world system of English is, is defined by power relationships, social and cultural norms, values, and beliefs. So let's take a little bit uh, closer look at that. Uh, here we have the world system of Englishes. We can see that there's four different levels, and we're mainly focused here on the hypercentral variety and the supercentral varieties. Where the hypercentral variety is American uh, English. It's the one that perforates all other Englishes through a global system of hegemonic power that influences cultures and languages. So an example of this would be Hollywood as the norm, where Bollywood and Nollywood are derivatives of that norm. Also notice the British English, or English English is no longer the hypercentral variety. This speaks to the evolutionary and dynamic nature of modulated Englishes. Some of the takeaways I'd like um, you to get from this presentation is that in the era of COVID-19, the internet is probably now the primary medium for English language contact. Uh, modulated English contributes to the multilingual term by placing an equal value on all varieties of English while acknowledging the unequal influences of those varieties with power. Modulated, modulated English also acknowledges the multi-competencies of English users who have access to a full spectrum of multilingual, communicative, and semiotic resources while helping to, helping to combat monolingual, monolingual and native speaker biases. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch my presentation. I look forward to your comments. If you have any, please feel free to email me.